Hey everybody, welcome to Kathmandu. As previously mentioned in my uh, previous video, today we'll be taking a look at the Sony Alpha 6300. So let's take this camera out for a spin and let's see what she can do. But first, let me get my jacket. It's uh, about 10 degrees out right now. All right, got my jacket on, let's go. got my shoes on and let's head out. But before that, let's talk specs. This is a Sony Alpha 6300. This camera comes natively with a 1650mm kit lens and uh, this camera has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, APS-C sized, with the ability to record up to 4K videos. The video bit rates are up to 100 megabytes per second for both 4K and 1080p videos. You're able to record at 4K 24 to 25 frames per second and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. This camera has an electronic viewfinder built in, a tiltable LCD screen on the back, and input for external mics. It's able to output 4K on the HDMI at 422. It also has features such as uh, Wi-Fi and NFC for mobile connectivity. And you'll also be able to shoot panorama photos out of this camera natively. So right now you're watching me at 4K 24 frames per second at 100 megabits per second. And without further ado, let's take a trip around Kathmandu. Let's go. So I believe you could have uh, just seen the autofocus performance. Everything has been left to auto. You could directly manual focus. There is a mode called DMF, which you could choose. It's on autofocus most of the time and you can dial the focus in manually. But for the purpose of this video, I've left everything in auto so that you can see what the camera can really do on its own. One major gripe about this camera, the battery life is bad, it's just terrible. This camera basically goes through battery as fast as a Nissan GTR would with its petrol tank or a Bugatti traveling at 400 km an hour. The battery is just too small for this camera. Another annoying thing is the screen. You've got some setting for the screen, you could turn it up manually or you could just put it in sunny weather as the uh, kind of condition we are in right now. So the screen is quite bright, you can compose your shots or you can also use your EVF. The moment you hit record button, the LCD screen brightness goes down to zero and you can't really see much of anything. Why does Sony do this? We'll never know. There's another problem with the Sony, but then again, it's not unique to the Sony alone. It's the rolling shutters. CMOS sensors have uh, this downside to them. CMOS sensor generally records an image on their sensor from the top left to the bottom right. So anytime an object moves between that shot, the rolling shutter happens. But this camera, it's quite apparent. Though Sony has tried to improve it on the 6500. So let's take a walk to the stupa.
so this is how it looks at, at night at ISO 12800 I guess the video is pretty grainy but then that's about what you can expect from an APS-C sensor most probably if you want light, for low light video you should try the A7S2 so I've done a full day of uh, walking around Kathmandu taken quite a number of shots as you could see battery is left at about 25% I'm still on my first battery and uh, let's take a bit more shots let's finish up the battery let's see how many shots we can get so that I can give you a full detail on the amount of shots that I can take on a full single charge So what do I think of this camera? Overall, it's a very good camera, very compact and easy to carry around, especially with the 1650mm kit lens. The uh, camera has its drawback for being this small. I had to go through two batteries just to get 180 shots. That's inclusive of photos and videos, and that's not very impressive. The camera's autofocus is fantastic. 425 face detection autofocus points really helps and I'm pretty sure you could see it in all the photos and video samples that I presented to you. The other drawback is the screen. Though I'm able to tilt it up or down, I'm unable to tilt it to the left, towards the bottom or towards the top so that I'm able to see myself when I'm talking to you. All I can hope for is that the camera is recording and when I check it, it's fine. If not, I just gotta come back and do this again. Where the camera shines on the other hand is the amount of features that you have with the camera. For 3,800 ringgit, this camera packs a lot of features. Granted, the A6000 was a great camera in itself, and this is a major step up. The 4K recording, the 120 frames per second 1080p, the autofocus that's lightning quick, the ability to plug an external mic, the ability to add output 4K through its HDMI natively, the amount of color profiles that you can choose for your video on such a compact body is fantastic. The uh, Nikon D7100 that I've been using before this, for four years actually, has been a great camera. It was a good, mighty camera, a very rugged camera, good selection of lenses that was available to it, and a great performer in low light. Now granted, that was four years ago. The video capabilities on the Nikon was not that impressive. After using this camera four years later, I'm truly impressed. Quite a beautiful landscape, isn't it? So let's talk a bit more about the camera. The menu system that Sony has employed in this camera is quite chaotic. It's quite busy, there's so many pages that you need to go through before you can get what you want. I am coming from a Nikon and the Nikon menu system was so easy, the learning curve was not that steep. This on the other hand is quite steep. You gotta remember where everything is, you gotta remember your pages, you gotta remember your settings and to keep switching between photo and videos and to keep switching between the different different scenes, the different settings that you require is quite of a hassle. So let's talk about another drawback. This camera initially, when it was launched, it had a serious overheating issue. Especially in 4K, the camera would shut down in about 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, Sony fixed it in the Alpha 6500. So they enabled a feature where the camera is able to record to a higher temperature before it shut down. And uh, this camera was then addressed by Sony by releasing version 2.0 and now I have the ability to set it as well. Though I did get a high warning temperature back in the stupa when I was recording. The, uh, the option that uh, you guys could choose is the Sony Alpha 6500. That is the step up to this camera. It has in-body image stabilization and a bigger buffer for high speed continuous shooting. And if I'm not mistaken, that's about 8 seconds of high-speed continuous shooting. When this uh, camera is engaged in the high-speed shooting, the camera takes a lot of time to write to the card, even though I'm using a Sony U3 Class 10 high-speed card. If you're wondering, there's the sound of the sprinkler going off in the garden. Anyway, let's end this video. Would I recommend this camera to you? Yes, I would. I would suggest you go out and get it. 
and uh, you can forget about the kit lens or if you have the budget do get the Alpha 6500 with the 18105mm f4g lens that would be a better lens than the kit lens at uh, full open at 16mm the photos appear to be a bit soft and blurry especially at the edges other than that the lens is pretty compact so you could carry around all the products and all the camera gear that I've used today I'll be linking it down in the description together with the Alpha 6500 and the Sony 18105 G lens for your reference I'll try to get you the best deals over at Lazada and I'll be in the description below finally thanks again for watching and I hope you found this video useful hope you enjoyed looking at Kathmandu and uh, till we see each other take care bye bye cheers <laughs>